am in desperate need of some good footwear. Recently I did some test cutting with my Albion Knight and while I was editing I worked hard to try to keep my feet out of frame because I was wearing Nikes. Now I'd rather not spend a couple hundred bucks to get good fitting, accurate looking shoes. So what I want to do is create those myself and I'm going to show you how I make these. I've got some leather for the sole, this big old uh, nine ounce uh, hunk of leather. And then I've also got for the uppers, uh, this nice, soft and supple piece of leather. Uh, this is both, both pieces are vegetable tan leather, uh, which is gonna be perfect for dyeing. And we're gonna turn these pieces of leather into shoes. So I started yesterday, I made a couple of shoes, and I used a pattern from Ian Laspina's uh, tutorial that he did a couple of years ago, uh, actually back in 2014. And I tried that, and I had some trouble with it. It shrunk by uh, almost a quarter of an inch on all sides here. And I'm not implying that there's anything wrong with Ian's work. I think actually he did a great job, but this did give me an opportunity to start over as well as gave me a little bit of experience. So I'd already made a pair of shoes and um, starting here on the second pair. Um, first thing you'll do is trace your feet onto paper and, uh, and then you'll cut that out. And then what you need is a good pattern. So I've wrapped my feet in a bag and then on top of that, use masking tape. Now this shoe is, you know, it's gonna be more like a sock. So it's, it's pretty tight. And what that means is that when you cut it out, uh, you'll probably want to add about a quarter of an inch to each uh, edge, just so you have enough. There's a couple of things going on. First, there's a seam that happens that goes around, and that does reduce the size of the leather. And then the other thing is that you'll still have some shrinking. There's really not anything that you can do to avoid that. The leather's going to shrink a little bit when you get it wet, and it really is necessary to get it wet to turn it. So once you cut out the uh, sole from this pattern, then you've got the pattern ready to go. And you, you want to cut on something. Um, this is like a cutting board. You could use a piece of wood, but you got to be careful that you don't want to you know, scar up the table or whatever you're working on. So I'm going to use this uh, cutting board here. And I'll trace the pattern uh, onto the 9 ounce leather. This is going to be pretty good um, for the, uh, the sole. And once these are traced onto the leather, uh, we'll be ready to cut them out. And so I've got my X-Acto knife, and uh, it does take a little bit of time to get through this leather uh, because it is so thick. Uh, when I'm cutting smaller pieces of leather, often I use just a giant pair of shears that I happen to have. Um, but anytime the leather is very thick like this, it requires uh, like an X-Acto knife cut. So. Um, you know, once you get these cut out, then you'll be able to sort of even them up, uh, make sure you get off the little pieces, and just really smooth that out. You can use an X-Acto knife for that um, as well. I suppose you could even use a piece of sandpaper if you want it to be super smooth, but really that's not necessary. So you've got your pattern, you'll want to trace that uh, onto the uppers. And this is a three to four ounce piece of leather. I think it's actually called milled leather. Not positive about that, but I think that's what it's called. It's softer. Um, you could use the shoulder as well, like a single shoulder, um, but uh, you know, it might be a little too thick, so I've gone with like three to four ounce. I wouldn't go any thinner than that. The thicker you go, the harder it is to turn them, but you'd probably be adding some durability as well. So you've got the soles cut out. And the next thing you'll do is take your, um, your uppers, make sure they fit. So sort of what they look like. I've got a little flap cut out uh, for the toggle or the strap that'll be attached in the back. Um, and then the side seam that'll get sewn uh, to the other piece of leather. But just to make sure that they will stretch around and you might want to put these on your feet to see if they if the top pieces will cover, if they won't cover your feet, you might have made it a bit too small. 
but I've tried that, they seem to work great. So it's time to prep, and put those holes in the sole. You want to start with the fleshy side, uh, not the grain side, and you'll put holes uh, from the top to the side. So the needle comes out the side rather than the bottom of the sole. Um, if you put it, if you put it on the bottom, you'll likely be walking uh, on the stitches, and that'll reduce the uh, the amount of time that these last. Um, so this, this is actually a time-intensive process here, putting those uh, holes all the way around. Um, and there were parts of the uh, of the leather that were a little bit softer, so. Uh, occasionally I went a little bit further back to make sure that I was you know giving it enough room for those uh, for those stitches to really be secure and then the uh, the stitches on the uppers I've made them quarter of an inch apart and, uh, and then right here pulling the linen thread through One of the feet um, sort of went as I punched those holes as I went around. But it's probably easier to do it all at once so you don't have to keep stopping and keep punching. And that's what I've done for the uppers. So they have punches that go all the way around. Um, but I did on one of those feet, one of the two uh, shoes, I sort of went, went around, took my time. Now, once you get these sewn together, uh, you can see that everything's inside out. You've got the suede, and the bottom is, is pointing out there that it's really soft in the heel area. So, I don't know if this is the right way to do this, but I cut out an additional shape for the bottom of my foot and used some glue to uh, fix that just to give it some additional stiffness. In just a second, you'll be able to see that shape that I cut out. But this is what they look like before they're turned. And so I used the, this barge all-purpose cement to do this. And I've got that, uh, that additional sole. You could probably use an insert or something that you could buy. But just went ahead and glued that. Because the sole is already so stiff, didn't really make a difference in terms of the difficulty in, in uh, turning that shoe. Uh, it was impossible to turn it really before I got it wet but after I got it wet the uh, leather does relax uh, you might want to leave it in the leather in the water for a minute or two get that really to relax and to turn and these take a while to dry um, so they're really not going to be ready for anything else until they dry now these get a little bit big when they're in the water they get super soft and uh, they will shrink as they dry out so that should be a good thing if you've made them a little bit oversized so when these shoes dry I will finish the edges add some dye and possibly some toggles to the strap and uh, so I'll probably do an additional video just to show you what that looked like but I'm glad you're here today well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here with me today. Uh, please leave a like or a comment. Um, or if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. I'd love to have you back here to see what else I make on this channel. So uh, I will catch you later.